you look like they have spiders. Here you go, my man. Oh, Check yeah. him out. Welcome everybody to a very, very special episode of the World's Worst Fishing. I'm your host, Chris Jones, and uh, oops, we just um, cleaned out our shop here. We're taking this show on the road. Yeah, here's a site right here. So, uh, got a couple of gallon jugs there. I believe four in this one, two in this one. I think four black label, two white label. Um, yeah, we've got quite a mess of stuff here. You know, a select few pigments, select few flakes, lots of powders, highlights down there. We've got hyper shifts and uh, eyeballs. I can't get it to focus. Hiding down there. Well, we'll look at that later. Sorry for that. And quite a selection of molds. Um, we've, of course, got the hot plate because we're going to be doing injection and, lamp, uh, and hand pouring. Triple injector just in case we want to get crazy. Heat gun clamps hand clamps you name it camera gear and uh yeah it's uh it's getting fun this should be a fun exciting adventure oh i just heard my drumsticks fall off the table okay guys we are at the venue osprey bay outdoors here in clearwater it is a high-end kayak fishing store just look at this we have nothing like this in tallahassee this is where the magic's gonna happen just look at look at the vibe in here so right now I'm testing out the functionality. I've got the hot plate on and the microwave. Got to make sure that they can work together and not blow this place up. Yeah, there's Brent. He helped organize this wave. Wave to the camera. He makes baits too. Got the molds laid out. We're setting up some stuff. Got the plastic and the colors down here. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're gonna show these people a good time on how to make their own soft base. Now, now a table surface like this would absolutely require some cleaning. Um, some, sometimes, like, you know, you spill pigment on it or, you know, glitter sticks to everything. Yeah. No, you know? But, but that. yeah, but the actual plastisol material comes off pretty easily. Yeah. Um, pretty much any surface. So, in, in that sense, it's it's a very efficient material to work with. So, you know, like the, some of the um, Z-Man stuff would be a little, just not as user-friendly. You know, like you can see right away how user-friendly this stuff is. You know, it, it cleans up easy, it sets up quickly, and you can reuse it. All of these little parts can be reused, okay? Right, I've been told I have to do a drum roll on the molds. So this is what I do on my uh, YouTube channel. So I like to do drum roll reveals. <laughs> All right, and and here we go. Here we go. I was wondering what the jump It's not the Chris Jones show without that. Just so you know. Check him out. There it is. Wow. Well, yeah, this is not even open. Yeah. yeah. That's bad. I'm not Isn't that incredible stuff, man? I, I make a swim bait color that this is in the belly, and people go bananas over it. And this is where things can get messy. You got to be careful with your uh, glitters. Have you, uh, okay, okay. All right, very good. Bring it on up. <laughs> Have you had a glitter explosion yet in your, in your show? No, but no? when I go to pour the glitters, I'll, I'll do it in, in front of the fans like a dummy and then it explodes. Yeah, it just goes everywhere. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> I was hesitant to ask for too much, but after seeing how much was left, dude, I was like, dude, uh, slide that in there. This is y'all's day, man. Yeah. You've got the uh, the master of plaster. See, and, and then you can you can you can even alter this white pearl. You can add a drop of black, and it'll make it like a charcoal pearl. Oh, so even um, after heating it up again, you can change the color. You can change the color. Oh, wow. as, as much as you want. You're only you're taking the same color and just altering the base slightly. Got it. Okay. Nothing. All right, we won't get as many molds out of this out of this run, but uh, all right, he wants the swim baits. You want the frog? We'll do the shrimp and just see what we can get. Nothing to it, guys. Injections, injections, fun. You know, there's not that steep of a it learning looks, curve. It looks a lot simpler than it was going to be. The the learning curve is is really the the prep work. You know, building your color, not burning your plastic, getting everything up to this point where you're actually pushing the plastic in. Now, what's the difference uh, if you pour it before putting it in that, without putting it in? in if, that. if you pour it before what? 
Yeah. What was that called? The before, before the vacuum you chamber. The vacuum chamber. Oh, um, you, you'll, you'll just have some air air bubbles in, in your plastic. It's, it's purely cosmetic. Uh, so yeah, you know, now we're kind of getting towards the end of the life here of, of that particular two cups of plastic. You know, you, you could basically, if you wanted to get every drop out of this, you would now transfer it to a smaller cup okay. where you can, right? So a quarter cup of plastic in there is gonna be taller in this way, so that you can get that injector nozzle down. So just little little things there. <laughs> well, that was, that, was, that 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 was the other one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like that, they'll still be a little warm to the touch, sort of like fresh laundry. Again, what, if you watch my channel, the laundry noise is an ongoing joke. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oops. He pours in his garage, but it's like I a pour in my garage, which is where the oh yeah. This is where the washer and dryer are. That's an awesome flake. Yeah. It's cool stuff. And what's great about hologram flake is it's not temperature sensitive like wow. spinal flake. Wow, yeah. That was really nice. So what we'll do is we'll do the swim baits and the shrimp in your pink orange. Sweet. Yeah, so I'll show, I'll show you all the inside of what's called a blending block. Do you have a dual injector yet? I don't. That's expensive. my next one. <laughs> that's my next one. Uh, yeah, they're so bad. <laughs> so yeah, it's literally the dumbest thing ever. It's just the two strings of plastic just funnel together. Somehow it works. It just does. Yeah. You know, and, and, and really the key to it, to get to get the two different cups of plastic to flow together, you need even viscosity, right? So you don't want one plastic to run quicker or slower than the other as they're entering the mold cavity. And you do that by controlling your temperatures. So he actually brought a temperature gun. This was really nice. we, I haven't used like I haven't used this in forever, but we'll use it today just for demonstration sake. So, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's awesome. Just for, okay. just, for, just for a mold that you want, Chris, and a couple of colors, and just the basics. What do you think they can do it for to start? Just right. So I, I I have a video called How to Get Started on a Budget. Okay. And the budget I'm using is five hundred dollars. Okay. And you can go a long way with five hundred dollars. Where you're gonna have to keep spending money after that initial overhead is just when you want more crap, right? You you want that next pigment, right? You want that hologram flake. You you want a new mold. Um, the good thing about a lot of these materials, particularly the molds and the injectors, once you buy them, they're there. So I, they didn't I, last I, a long time. I, I've, I've, there are molds that I've had since 2012. Oh, you okay. know, my dual injector, this is from 2014. Um, molds pretty much last as long as you want them to. Um, your only really non-renewable resource is the plastic. the plastic. Yeah, so if I wanted to maybe just get started with like, making different color paddle tails and different color shrimp, just one of each. Just get one mold of each and start small, you know, order plastic by the gallon. Cause here, right, like he was saying, like four inch paddle tail, probably most common size. Right, to use. yeah. And then to buy this and ship it, it's like total, like maybe 38 to 40 bucks, that's it. Oh, okay. And you could pour, he literally yeah. does a show where he pours a thousand baits off a gallon. Wow. I mean, I know in fact it's all the same color. Okay, you all right, so you're the color. orange and pink, orange all right. Pink. Okay. Maybe a little speck. Okay, all right, so so we want some uh, sparkle in there, some flakes, or just yeah, some, a little, some powder. Yeah, a little flake. All right, how about we spruce it up with some powder? Yeah, what's the yeah, powder? powder? Yeah, yes. Okay, all right. Go ahead and make some bait. Dude, this will become your Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could throw 100 baits in like an hour. Instead of going out, yeah. drinking, being an idiot, you're gonna be <laughs> covered in color, <laughs> you know? I mean, like, geez, that's watermelon, you know, that'll never come out. I don't care. That's why we do so much laundry. And, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why there's so much laundry. That's why we noise. do the laundry. All right, more highlights. Yeah, let's do it. Highlight. We'll make this and then we'll catch all monster redfish. And highlight, gives you, highlight gives you a really cool angled sheen. It's just the only way to describe it is it's highlight. Look, look at that cap and, and angle it. Right, oh, wow. it it doesn't discolor the plastic, but it, but it adds that effect to whatever your base color is. Wow. Like a color shift. Uh, sort of. I watch you do. Well, yeah. So, dude, you you probably have highlights. I don't. No I, highlights. I, I, bro, I, that looks cool. It's like a sherbet ice cream almost. 
So yeah. I think I, you just came up with a name for it. I think, yeah, I, I think that'll be pretty sweet. Sherbet ice cream. Sherbet right. ice cream. Yeah. Sherbet ice cream bake. That's what it is. <laughs> Tell everyone you're you're just just killing the trout on your sherbet ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a run on blue dot at the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> and the beauty of this class is once you start buying it, you can tell the wife it's Chris Jones's fault. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. I've been known to cause a few divorces. <laughs> sure, you know. Financial hardship. Yeah. Chris he, Jones's fault. He already is fishing all the time, and now when he is home, he's in his garage. It's it's a real problem. So is this on? Is this like actually heating? No, no, no. That that will be when we get to the open pores. Oh, okay. Which okay. is where okay. patience is required. I, I know you got to get out of here soon. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I think I'm going to say that. <laughs> I'll take my fiance. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, hey, you're already on the right track. Ditch the wife right. for <laughs> making bets. You're, all, you're already there. She's already lying you to your wife for the, for, the, for the cause. You just don't know it. She'll sleep in. It'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> you're already there. I'm already lying for the kayak is done. Now I'm going to be Now I'm eight. mixing these colors really light because that your example would really yeah, see yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, really light. If yeah. the first one sucks, all we got to do is just add a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. You see how they now have like a blue powder oh, machine yeah. to them? Wow. That that's the highlight effect. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. wow. That's just one little extra layer of effect that's gonna flash more in the water, essentially. Yeah. But it doesn't discolor the bait. It it gives you that sort of holographic, reflective nature of like a fish scale. Um, so like if you look at a pilchard, right, the whole thing looks like a hologram. Yeah. Um, same with our shad in freshwater. That's how you would kind of mimic that in soft baits. Oh. Oops. <laughs> I don't even know if it was on. Was it on? Oh yeah, it's still on. Okay, okay. See, look at that. That's All right, good. <laughs> so the key to a good laminate is even temperatures. Okay, so let's just see where we are. Our orange, you want to stir it and then temp it. That way you're not just getting a surface temp. 360, 362, this is probably hotter. 374, yeah. So I can just tell by how thick or thin the plastic feels and looks to the touch, right? This one stirs lighter than this one. This one's a little bit thicker, right? So this one needs to cool off more, so I'm gonna stir it more. So I want this one to cool off faster than this one because I want to get them as close to even as possible. That's sort of the whole goal of the laminate. So I'm going to stir this one, stir, 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 because that's going to release heat faster, right? So now we're down to 340. This one is at 346. Perfect. Okay. We are now in a very narrow window of temperatures. We'll do orange on top. We'll do orange on top. Yep. That's I usually go the darker color on top. All right. That and works. in this case. I would say pink is probably the lighter. Yeah. All right, so both nozzles go in there. We draw the injector up, okay? Bring it over and just fit it into that, okay? Now we inject slow, steady. Hold a little bit of pressure just to keep things filling, okay? Pull this out, bring it over, okay? Now we're on the first cavity. A little bit of pressure, okay? Next. And so on. It's like gummy bears for fish. Yeah, that's exactly what. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope, hope I uh, filled this one in enough. Yeah, and and there again, this is so see-through. We may not be able to really see the highlights all that well. Yeah. So as you can see, it's really see-through. We could opaque it more, but you know, if you hold it up, you'll you'll see the. The, uh, the, the the two colors. Oh yeah! There. Wow. And so you know, to me that actually looks very very natural looking color because most shrimp are see through in real life. Yeah. You know, especially little ones. You, know, you hold them up to the sun and you can wow. breathe through them essentially. You know? Paint, do a little dot, mm -hmm. do a little dot there. Just dot, and then you're done. And you could dot those eyes black. Wow. That's, that's really I, I didn't bring my dotting paint yeah, because it's a really it's a solvent based paint. And, um, <laughs> You gotta wear like a respirator. <laughs> you know oh, I mean, that yeah. stuff will eat your lungs alive. So, yeah. Wow, that's cool. That yeah. cool. Oh yeah, that's man, cool. dude, the paddle tails. Look at that. You can see the. Oh yeah. Wow. You can see the two colors in it. Oh, that's a small one. Though. Yeah, you can a few small and a few big ones. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know that. I think that's gonna be money for gator trout. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Gator so, trout season. Yeah, season. yeah. And, and there again, I, you know, I've been doing it a long time. I probably made that look just very seamless. There's a learning curve to, to doing lambos, yeah. you know. You're, you're gonna just not get it right the first couple of times. You just have to know that going in. What and, about the temperature you pour in at first? Yeah, so by the time those hit the molds, they were probably in the 330s. So okay. in order to get the most even laminate, you want even temperatures and also lower temperatures. Cool. That way the viscosity is just, it's just more ideal. The plastic's not going in there so liquid and, and hot and thin that it's not gonna mix together. You want the plastic to go in and, and just kind of marry each other, but not mix together. Right. Oh. Now, so, now, now in, in laminates, you normally have more waste, you have more leftover. So you're gonna get a little bit less number of baits out of that gallon, and I'll show you why, right? What is laminates? Laminates is, is what we just did, two cups. Oh, two cups. Laminated on top of each other. Oh, okay. Right, so this runner, if I was to remelt that, it would then mix these mix two the together. Two so you can reuse this, but you can't put it back in, you can't put you can't the same back in the bottle. Right. Yeah. You're, you're not gonna get the same result. But then you mix it and you have a new color. You mix it and then now you have a solid color Rainbow yeah. server or server. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And then like I said, that's cool. These two parts from the dual injector can be reused, right? <coughs> gotta, get, gotta get the plugs out. There you go. That's very satisfying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like watching a Dr. Pimple show. And then Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and then Why really watching this. <laughs> yes. Really, you know, once you've seen this, you you've seen what the triple injector does. Now you're okay, just taking yeah. it a step further and really torturing yourself trying to do three. Trying to do three. When you want to do like four colors, it's more like when you want pouring. when you want to do four colors. Now you're doing hand pouring. Yeah. 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 Now now now. Like the you, one you showed me. Yeah. Now you now you're to the point where you want stuff that is out of the realm of possibility, really. Yeah. For for injection. You know, and, and another cool trick in injection is to get swirls. If you've ever seen a swirl color that's done with this as well. You're just doing each color one after another. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Oh. You get that swirl effect. That's really a bass fishing thing in like Cinco worms. Yeah, I was gonna like say, you, I don't you, think you probably, you're, you're probably not gonna about. see swirls in, in, in shore baits. Okay, I yeah, would, that's what I would, I You know, it's, it, it's a novelty thing. Yeah. So, you know, as, as you can see, most of the time commitment is, is in the prep, is yeah. in getting things ready for the injection process. And it's sort of the opposite for hand pouring. The time commitment is doing the actual pour, placing the color, and then letting it cool down. So I'll yeah, probably see, get Because you got to let it cool down before you can pull the next next color. Yeah. But when you do that, I'm, I'm sure we'll see it. Yeah. But when you oh, do yeah. that, yep, you'll see it. even though it's already cooled, the other stuff, the other layer will still stick. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, oh, it's, it's, it's all it's all a game of timing and temperature with, with the hand. There we go. Yeah, the, the 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 hand pouring stuff is truly somewhat of an art form. All I need is one day to just be catching all the fish. Like, what are you catching it on? Oh, these. Where would you get them? Oh, sorry, you can't. You can't. Sorry, right, you should have come to the bait yeah, store. Yeah, that's right. Get out of there. And there's probably like a mold for like every everything, everything. Even squid, octopus. Yeah. yeah. Well, because that, like... I, I, Make your own calamari. I used to live in... Um, What's going I, on? No, you. Oh, <laughs> all right. You're live streaming, so he's live streaming you here. Good, good. Yeah, I, people, I used to live people in, need to see that they're actually missing out on something cool, so that they show up next time. Yes. I mean, this is the hobby. It just keeps on giving. Yeah, a lot of people throw in those giant soft the giant paddle tails and then like like you said some octopus see in, in, in some of those some of those may be poured out of uh, out of silicone and then painted just because silicone's tougher you know so it, it, oh it, that would make sense because link got tear them mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. well you know it's so what do you say what you pour it's, it? it's it, it's a trade-off you know you using silicone you're pretty much limited to pouring a single color and then you have to paint it and then you know, uh, oh, okay. clear, you know, clear coat it and all that. Um, you know, with, with this, the materials are cheaper and you can have a lot more fun in terms of how you can put color together. So it's, it, it's, it's a trade-off, just uh, 
Yeah, like I think that's good. Just, just like anything that's else. All right, next, you want to see Okeechobee Crawl? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Yeah, what is that? This is a very popular bass color. It's beautiful. Did you want the shrimp? Uh, no, you can I don't do a lot of saltwater fishing. Ah, okay. <laughs> I dabble sometimes. Just like that, I don't do fresh water. All right. Yeah, I was gonna say just like yeah. that. I don't really do freshwater, but my buddy in Lakeland's been asking me to go, so I figured this is a good chance to get a Dude, couple of baits oh, to try yeah. it. <laughs> you got a buddy in Lakeland. He's in bass oh, he's, fishing he's, mecca. He's, yes, he's all into yeah. bass fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, as he should be. If he he grew in up in Lakeland. Yeah. Then he should move to Kissimmee. He should, and he should be a stick. Like six months ago, moved back to Lakeland. He's yeah. like, yes. Now I get to go <laughs> bass fishing again. He should be good <laughs> at it. There's no excuse. Yeah. Okay, Okeechobee Crawl. And then we will get some stuff. All right, for Okeechobee Crawl, we're gonna do your more traditional bass bass. We're oh, sorry, one question about yeah. the double. How do you, I guess you just open it or you just remember what side's the top? Yeah, the so yeah. So basically you would you would just learn the mold orientation. And um, so for example, the shrimp mold is actually a great top bottom. Oh, yeah. okay. So what a lot of people do is they'll actually like just print off some label stickers and just stick, you know, top belly or something on there. Oh, okay. All right, so for you, you're gonna get swim bait blend. Okay. In the uh, uh, creature baits there. So basically the same process, right? Just gonna heat up all these tops. I would do like four and a half minutes. Yeah, check it out. Open her up. See, see if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take, 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 take the uh, ones out. Start with less because you're gonna add more, right? right. And so that's our blue. Okay, so so now we have this green pumpkin and the blue. So the blue right now is overpowering the green pumpkin, so I want to add more green pumpkin time. And so I want my saturations to be equal as well. So I want my color sat. I don't want one color to be completely see-through and then the other color to be super opaque. Generally speaking, some colors, that's kind of what you're going for. Um, most colors, you want the two you want the two colors to, to be equal. You don't want one to overpower the other, generally speaking. There'll be a little bit more here. And then it's just an issue of some flake, and generally speaking, or normally, traditionally, you're just using black flake for your Okeechobee crawl. And you can add other, you can add silver and gold flake in there and then it becomes Okeechobee magic. So, black flake on that side, black flake on this side. Quarter teaspoon each for these one cup sizes. Comes out just about perfect. Alright, so what the chef in here. It's done. Look at that, huh? Do I need to start cursing like Gordon yeah. Ramsay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, what, what's whatever. Oh gee, you idiot. Yeah. yeah. That's bloody awful. Alright, so quick little reheat in the back pot and then we're ready for action. Yeah, so here, here's what that color is gonna look like. You can see how they mix together to create that kind of bright green, that sort of aqua green. Oh yeah. It, wow. it, it, it literally looks like the flats. Wow. Aqua green. Okay, cool. Can you, you know, talk? And, and so there's a basic example of color building. Can you talk about Chris about uh, the effects of moisture on your plastic for, Yeah. For joining yeah. Here so, so the uh, polyvinyl chloride resin absorbs moisture. So once you crack a jug or a bucket of plastic any moisture in your environment, say a hot human garage, 
you're gonna have moisture get into your plastic, which is gonna create more bubbles. That's why this becomes a lifesaver, um, mm, especially okay. especially in our climates around here. Yeah, it gets it real bad, yeah. like very bad. Yeah, so we've got, so right now we have three very traditional freshwater baits lined up. We have a brush hog, a craw, and a lizard. Doesn't get more large mouth than that. Same with this color. Get off of there. At the brush hole. like little boogers. Dude, yeah, it's bad. There we go. I may I may have flashed this one. It sounds it sounds a little flashed. Nope, not flashed. Okay. Great. That's awesome. great. Flash me. Flash is when you push too hard and the plastic now comes leaves the cavity and gets between uh, the mold where it shouldn't be. Yeah. And then your mold is stuck together. They look like they have spiders. Use it? Here you go, my man. Oh, Check yeah. him out. It's always they always look cooler where the extremities are, right? Like, oh, yeah. see how see how the little tentacles are blue on this one, but they're green on yeah. that one. It's just, it's you know, it just it just kind yeah. of uh, you never really know what's gonna happen. Wow. Yeah. I love how the color blends. Yep. I bet I bet the lizards are gonna look pretty cool too. I don't want to swear. Yeah. My neck like I don't know why I would use that. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna Six. take one just to try it for. If you don't get it to 350, it'll it was all in a runny gooey mess. Yeah. Yep. You gotta get the resin mixed in, or uh, or else it's it's a bad day. Is that the same for like um, remelts too? Like after they set up, do you have to get it to 350 again? Nope, you just oh. have to get it hot enough to where it's just remelted. Oh, you, you, okay. Because you, you, this, does, this does not need to be chemically converted again. Yeah. Well, you know, what, what I always tell people is buy the biggest injector that you can afford because you're going to eventually add molds to your collection. It is inevitable. Unless the world ends, you are going to add more molds. And why not have the capacity to fill more molds at once? So like if, if you can buy that that big 16 ouncer, do it, you know. But what the, the problem is you start getting too big and now it's now it's a pain in the butt to only suck up that much plastic to do one mold at a time. Yeah. So, you know, it's easy for me to say, oh, buy all different sizes. Well that's not practical for somebody starting to stuff this expensive. Um, so a happy medium is your six ouncer and then a ten ouncer. I've been doing this a long time. I live with the six ouncer and the ten ouncer. Um, I do have one that's 32 ounces. I call it the Mondo injector. There's a really funny video on that, the Mondo injector. It's like me holding up this giant thing, and I mean, God, you can just you can just do 30 molds. I feel like it's, it's incredible. Actually. And you can get through all those molds before it cools down. With with that amount of volume in the injector that big, yep. That's, that's a great question, though. You know, it is sort of a countdown, you know, once you suck that plastic up, it's immediately cool. You know, so you, you, gotta, you gotta get your stuff pumped out. And is this about how big molds get? Or are there some that are just like... You can get really big ones, but bulk. the mold market as it is for us garage, home, do-it-yourselfers, these are the, this is what you're gonna see. Okay. Almost 100% of the time. Yeah, I wasn't for, sure if, like, for, for, for I know I want to make a, I'm going to make a ton of four inch paddle tails, for example. There's yeah. A massive one that does like 10 or 12. Yeah, or I mean, you, you, yeah. you can probably find somebody who's got a scaled up version. The bigger the mold is, the more likely you are to maybe run into some problems with injection, the further the plastic has to travel. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's why they're all pretty small. Yeah. So basically, we're going to do a belly color middle vein color. Oh, different colors, okay. 
is going to be a three layer. Yep. <coughs> this one, I'll bet these are still just smoldering. Yeah. Yeah, let me touch it. No, yeah, don't touch <laughs> that. Gotta sign the waiver before you touch that. Like, it's okay if I get hurt. Not anybody else. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with with what is the belly color, the bottom color, and I want a tail for it. I want the belly color to go all the way through the back of the tail, just for this particular color. And it's clear. Yep. Well, it's got some sparkle. It. It's okay. got some flake. Or I'm sorry, some powder. And you just kind of have to know how high to pour it. Y'all are welcome to come gather around. So now we're actually going to use chartreuse again to do a chartreuse vein. It's a color that I like a lot. So we don't want to add too much color. You know, and again, let's just build your color how you want. I know that I don't want this too opaque because opaque just kills a small bait in my opinion. So we want this to have a lot of illusion to it. To me, that's natural. You know, hold up a shiner or a filter or a shad. Hold it in your hand, look at it, it's see-through, you know, much like the shrimp. So I don't want the colors to be so rich that it just looks like a crayon. You know? I want I want a natural light penetration to the bait like you would see in nature in a, in a real forage fish. So the only difference in this, it's like it's still the same stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's good. That's that all that does. That just has more resin than these two, so it's firmer. Oh. There's less softener in it because of the ratio of resin. So this plastic is now set up enough to where I can pour the next layer. However, it's still gooey enough that the layers are going to thermally blend and bump. Because the last thing you want is delamination of your layers. Because then you have a pretty bait, but it's not functionally sound. You know, you, you go to put it on the jig head, it's just gonna split it, split apart. Now, now your bait sucks. Yeah. So the way to get around that is heat. So for the next part, I'm gonna pour the vein. And this is the tricky part. I'm gonna start in the back towards the tail. I'm gonna pour it slow and steady. I'm gonna stop it about right there because I want the vein to flow into the head section, but stop at a certain point. I don't want it to go all the way to the nose. I want it to stop right there about where the eye socket is. To me, that just looks really professional when, when the vein color ends behind the eyeball, I guess, is the way that I like to think about it. And that's kind of how the hand port swim bait's been done for, for ages. It's the mark of a good, a well hand poured bait is consistency of how the veins are placed. Slow and steady. Steady hand. And you just kind of want to, you know, this is what takes so much practice is getting this part down. It's getting um, consistencies between it. And, and, you know, they're all not going to stop exactly in a straight line, but you want them all about right up there in the eye socket. All right, vein color is now in. Done, done, done. <laughs> peel them out, man. Yep, just kind of get your hand in there and peel them out. Yeah. I don't want to do one, but I don't know what color. You got to do the reveal, yeah. Jared. You, you got to pull it out. Okay. okay. Very good. Well, yeah, we're uh, a little smoke. Uh, yeah, we'll wait. Yeah, we'll wait. Yeah, here. Oh, cool. he said he said this color. What we're gonna do is cool it down. Ah, oh, there you go. You can do that. You can do that with injection. You can cool down uh, real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's like a. Okay. All right. So, what color would you like to do? Well, come on now. You gotta give me something. All right now. Something. You want paddle tails? Do black with the gold. I know flag. that. Black with gold flake. I've got something like a root beer. I've got scupper nog. Um, yeah, that would go flake. It's gonna kind of. It'll kind of look like that. Right, here's your paddle tails that you made. You want to come open them? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, hit it up. <laughs> yeah, just crack her up. Okay, so it looks like those two tails didn't quite fill. It's it's hard to know how hard to do it sometimes. Oh but, yeah, how yep. small this tail yep. is. Yep, but the last two the last two filled. See, we'll look at the way that the color shifts. That's why it's called color shift. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You might could still throw those. I mean, they might still swim. I do. I mean, worst case. I mean, what, what, what the heck? Yeah. yeah. You know, I just, I always tell people, don't force the injector because you don't want to, to flash the mold. Yeah. Uh, that's the ones that didn't come out. Uh, this one. See how the tail just the, the tail just looks like a dud. Yeah, right. it's, it's it's the brunt it's yeah. the brunt of the tail. Yeah. Was it just the plastisol with the um, hypership powder? Yeah. Was it? But, uh, it was the same color. He, I just used the same one that he poured yep. on the top here. Oh, okay. Yep, just some just some leftover. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Super cool with the tail. All right, just that in the water, the way that all the shifts come out. When you actually throw it in the water, it's gonna grow. You're gonna pocket me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything on top of the microwave. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Anything on top of the microwave, except for the eyes. Keep it there. So we can add more to it to thicken it. We can add a few drops of black to darken it. I think that looks good. What do you think? I mean, so that'll show the flake really well. Yeah, I think it looks yeah. good once you put the flake um, in. Yeah. You know, the more color you add to it, Generally, a little bit less flake you see, um, but yeah, are, that's, these, these are yours. Yeah, man. I think that's good. All right, so you want a gold flake? Yes, please. How much? A little bit, just for texture, like salt and pepper on food, or do you want it loaded up? Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Think change middle. The middle's right? normally the good. Good. One. It'll change the color a little bit mm -hmm. too. Yep. It'll. It, this. This will brighten the whole pigment base. You, you like it as is? Yeah. Do you want to do the injection? I think that's a good. Yes, he does. That, I think that's a really nice overcast yeah. day paddle yeah. tail throw right there. All right, gloves, glove up. Gloves. All right. So stick the injector in, draw up slowly. I'll kind of, you can, I'll kind of tell you when to stop because you don't need too much. But yeah, keep keep going. A little bit more. Another half inch or so. All right. Yeah, I think you're good. All right. And then. Just enough force. Perfect. See how it stopped? Yeah. You're you're basically done. You can move on to the next one. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. This is how it starts right here. This is how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, you're missing paychecks. And you gotta go. All right, and now fill in, fill in. Perfect. Got it. That just prevents uh, the, the the gate from running out. You purge it back. Injectors with the, uh, knobs like that. Yeah, man, those, have, they just, pop they just fall off yeah. and then they go into your cup of plastic. Yep. You're up, slugger. The and then them. this one is only single port. Oh, okay. So you're gonna feel it, you're gonna feel it push a lot more, but it's the same principle. Once you feel it stop, you're done. Nothing else, there's nothing else that, that you need to do. Yeah, this is only one mold, so. Look at there. Fill her up. Dude, those are snazzy, man. There you go. Nice. Hey, better tails than mine. <laughs> yeah, those came out really good. Oh, man, dude, that's like a that's like a wild shiner. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's right. Feeling how thick it is. Mm -hmm. So how long do you put it in again for? Well, we got to do 30 second intervals. 30 so. seconds? Yeah. Normally I do, you know, 18 seconds or something right now. Yeah. All right, here we go. Woo. Okay. Gotta work it open slowly. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, wow. That is nice. Oh, it's very nice. Yep. It's got that cool belly color. So all the colors are blended. Laminate line is very smooth. It's a 
smooth gradient of color. It stops in the eye socket. And um, that's a bad man with JAMA. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> this one might come out on the other side. Come on, baby. Yeah, yeah it's coming out the other side. Yep, that's what happens. So that's cleaned up. Where are the other ones at? Do whatever you need to do. Yeah, those are sick. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoy this kind of thing right there. So, we got really great consistency on these. They're yeah. pretty much all carbon copies. My vein stopped where I wanted it. The tails are all stopping where I want. The veins are centered in terms of height, depth on the body, right? The, so basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say is what I look for in a good hand pour is, is mainly consistency. So all my veins are at the same height on the body, right? This vein is not too low or too close to the top. Everything, everything's consistent. Yeah, they all kind of kind of like mm -hmm. slightly above center of the eye. Yeah, or, or right at center. Yeah. I try to aim for center. All right, what's happening, everybody? So, um, a few uh, afterthoughts from the event. I'm now back in Tallahassee, and uh, so we just got done with our eh, about four, four and a half hours. We stopped twice, I think. Um, so, not too far, um, and, and I have a lot of family down in that area. So, if you watched my uh, injection shrimp vlog video, I was right down there near this. Um, seeing family at the beginning of the month so um one thing i'll say is i had a great time i had a blast it was really awesome to see the light bulb go off um in the heads and minds of some of the people in the class now we did not have a very good turnout uh, so the turnout was not what we expected i think there were 20 something people uh sign up and rsvp and only like four showed up so I think uh, I think a few things were learned uh, in terms of you know what the promotion needs will be and uh, a few other incentives to get people to actually show up. Um, I think you know people are you know anyone in the fishing community they see oh a bait class learning how to make soft baits. I think they're going to be interested. Getting them in the door, however, um, will be a challenge going forward because I would like to do more of these. I would like to do more of these in different cities, hopefully one near you, and sort of take World's Worst Fishing on the road a little bit, sort of do a, a bait seminar tour, and then hopefully my dream now has been for several years, I've never mentioned it, but for several years now my dream has been to host a weekend long bait makers boot camp up in Michigan at the AI factory, you know, I mean we would have sponsor uh, you know, um, packages and raffles and, you know, tours of the dead-on facility, tours of the AI facility. You can watch your own mold be made. Um, really awesome stuff. And then just a, a full weekend of cranking out baits, hand-on experience. You know, what, ha what we did in this video was sort of the first ever concept of that. Um, so I had a blast. Um, you know, I, I hope that we were able to capture enough of it on camera here. To, uh, to kind of show y'all what was going on. Big thanks to uh, Osprey Bay Outdoors um, for allowing us to have it. They have an awesome kayak shop. If you are anywhere in the area and you are looking to get you know, on the water in the outdoors, um, definitely pay them a visit. They had a really great sort of warehouse vibe uh, for us to work in. Um, yeah, it was awesome to make baits in the AC. I can, I can definitely say that. It was great to not just be sweating from head to toe. Um, so yeah, I had a blast. Everyone involved had a blast. Um, those of you who signed up who didn't come, you missed out. This was so much fun. Even for me, you know, I make baits almost every day. This, this had a whole new excitement for me, um, just getting to show people the hobby for the first time. There was one gentleman there, I think his name is Chance. Um, he was a subscriber and, and came because he had seen me um, talk about it on a live stream. Now, he had some experience bait making, um, but I think it was cool for him to see um, to see it in person from 
somebody you know experienced who has all of the molds all the tools you know i think he didn't have a dual injector yet so he's never seen laminates you know he's never seen the hand pouring the hot plate all of those things and uh hopefully that inspired him to to continue on making baits so yeah we got new bait makers out of it and that's ultimately the goal it was super fun um hopefully i'll be back down in that area doing one again i don't get to get out much you know kids and now uh you know school year starting both my kids will be in you know their their preschool programs so things are about to get busy but i would love to do one of these you know maybe quarterly and and just get out in the world and bring this to you guys so let me know in the comments down below what y'all thought we're gonna quit rambling and uh like subscribe hit the notification bell we will see y'all in the next one